Hi, my name is Jesse Freeman, and I'm here to kick off Ludum Dari 42. Ludum Dari is the perfect opportunity to make a new game. You have two options, the jam or the combo. Both take place over the course of a weekend. The jam is 72 hours and lets you work with others, bring your own code and art, and basically do whatever you want, even using the theme as optional. For the hardcore, the compo is a 48 hour, build everything from scratch, do it on your own kind of experience. Both are fun, and it's up to you how you want to make a game during Ludum Dare. Make sure to check out all the rules on the site before you begin. And to prove how easy it is to make a game quickly, I'm going to use the rest of my keynote to rebuild a past Ludum Dare game. Ludum Dare, like most game jams, kicks off with a theme, but your job is to turn your empty desktop and blank canvas into something that others are going to want to play. Here, I've created a new game from the Fami template and opened up my code in Atom. Once I'm all set up and have an idea, I can begin coding. You should have everything you need ready before the event begins. You'll want to pick an idea in the first few hours. For Ludum Dare 26, the theme was minimalism, and I decided to build a very simple blackjack game. I like to set up all the variables I think I'll need early on. Next, I move on to setting up utilities I'll need to help speed up my development. For this game, I need a way to pad numbers with zeros, and I also need a way of displaying messages on the screen. If you're doing the jam, like I was, you can copy the code from previous projects or include any open source code you find online. Since Pixel Vision 8's template already had some logic for displaying wrapping text, I'll just copy that and modify it for this game. Don't reinvent the wheel. Use what you have or find lying around. After you've set up your game's foundation, you'll need to figure out a visual style for your game. This is probably the hardest part of Ludum Dari. It's a good idea to build a rendering logic you need to display text and graphics as soon as possible. If you're not comfortable making art, find an artist to work with or use open source art from online. You can always just use text and simple graphics and focus on gameplay instead. For this game, I didn't want to worry about creating any art, so I made it all text. One of the tricks I'll use here is to turn an empty sprite into a brush in order to paint larger numbers on the display without having to create a new font or graphics from scratch. I'll set all 64 pixels of this 8x8 sprite to a solid color later on and use that to draw the larger text. I'll use two render functions to display the player's hand. The first function displays the current value of the player's hand at the top of the screen. The second function displays cards the player can select to increase their hand's value to reach 21. I actually have a background in art, but I find it time consuming to create new graphics from scratch during Ludum Dari and code. So if I'm not working with an artist, I just go for the easiest solution possible. Even the selection icon I use for moving between the options is a text character. By the middle of the first day, you should have already settled on a visual style and it's time to move on to your game's foundation. The last thing I need to do is turn a sprite into a brush, so I'll add that logic to the game's init method. With that out of the way, I don't have to worry about creating any more art. You'll also want to have some text in your game that introduces it and tells players what the game is about. It's important to test your code as soon as you can. I already found a bug and had to go back into some earlier code to fix it. It's critical that you address bugs as you find them. Don't wait until the last minute or you'll run out of time and risk releasing a buggy game like I did on the last Ludum Dari. You'll want to have a working version of the game before the end of the day. Try to keep the core mechanic as simple as possible. To add a bit of a challenge to my blackjack game, I'm going to make a countdown timer to lower the number as the player decides what to do. Don't forget to add sound to your game. I always wait until the last minute and forget which usually costs me points in my game's final score. Once you have the core loop in place, it's time to work on the controls. The simpler, the better. This game is only going to use four buttons. The first two are the left and right arrows, which move the cursor. I'm going to use a trick here to repeat the value of the cursor's position to wrap it around to the first or last item based on which direction you move. The final thing I need to do is check for the A button when the game is not being played in order to start it. By the second day, you should be cleaning up the game's logic and creating a start screen. You'll also want to include instructions on how to play the game itself. Don't rely on people reading the Ludum Dari game page description. Here, I'm just setting up the player's initial hand values and the cards to pick from. Make sure to keep testing your game out as you add more code and business logic. 
Don't be afraid to add in placeholder functions for code you haven't written yet. Just work through each block of game logic and add the code to it while you test out the game. You'll want to stay on top of any breaking bugs before you get closer to the submission deadline. For this game, the player can select card values to add to their hand. When they make a selection, I need to disable the card and add it to the hand. A quick trick here is to make the value negative so I can tell if it's been used or not. The last thing I need to do in the game is calculate if the player wins or loses and display the correct message. By the middle of the second day, you should have an end for your game already built. It's important to have a start and end screen as well as all the core gameplay done by now. The last thing I need to do in the game is calculate if the player wins or loses and display the correct message. So it's time for a final round of testing and polishing before submitting. I've gone through and tested all the win and lose scenarios, including running out of time. Finally, the game is done. Time to name it, save it, and package it up to submit to the Ludumdari website. Once you have a build of your game, upload it to your own server and save the URL to your LD Jam page. You have one hour to submit your game and fix any last minute show stopping bugs. One thing I like to do is upload an early build of my game before the deadline, and then just update that build. Since you have to host your own game, you can continue making updates until the last minute without dealing with the rush of everyone else trying to get their game in on time. You can submit a build for any platform, but being able to play the game in the browser will get you the most players. Also, include the source code for your game so others can learn from what you did and see how it was built. Make sure your Ludum Dari submission page has compelling screenshots, a description about the game, and what they need to know to play it, and of course, links to actually getting the executable or embed the web version for players to try right in the browser. When Ludum Dari is over, the voting begins. This takes place for two weeks and you'll want to play and rate as many games as you can in this time. The more games you vote on, the better your chances of being found and getting more votes yourself. While there are no prizes, you'll win the satisfaction of making a game from scratch over a weekend, and hopefully you can continue to work on it after the jam to make it into something even better. Don't worry about making a perfect game. The goal of Lunandari is to really just have fun. So just build something you're comfortable with, and if you don't finish, that's okay too. I hope you enjoyed my keynote. Don't forget to check out my own games on ldjam.com.